What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another Pro Guides episode. My name is Nathan Ng, and we're going to be talking about our high elo tier list for patch 13.11. We have some nice changes with the update, but will those have a massive effect on our tier list rankings? You're about to find out. But before you do, make sure you check out our giveaway. Over 11,000 RP are waiting for you just to click the link in the description below. Go Pro and drop your username in the comment section as well. Get better at League and maybe get your favorite skin. With that being said, it's time to take a look at our top lane tier list to start off the video. For our very first highlight, we're going to be taking a closer look at one of the most banned champions in the patch. Rengar has been a menace in the jungle, and he's also quite the menace when it comes to the top lane. Even with Yumi's receiving a nerf, it's still fulfilling the purpose for when it's built. This item is mostly about the bonus movement speed that it provides, and nerfing the number of the lethality value was required, especially if you considered how Rengar's ultimate ability works. Having round 12 extra armor pen from his ultimate, and combining this with Yumi's lethality, grants his champion a lot of bonus damage during trades. Next to this, we also have to talk about his healing capabilities with his W in short trades. It's just really annoying to lock him down and approaching any brush can turn it into a deadly encounter for you. Going for the falling core items makes it even deadlier. So whenever you lock in the cat in the top lane, go for Yuma's Ghost Blade and Essence Reaver. Other than that, it's most likely situational items and even Hold Breaker is a thing. As not much has changed for the top lane meta climate, it's time to highlight an all-time classic once again. Jax and his love for lethal tempo. Lane dominance, scaling, and side laning are as big as they used to be. No nerfs coming into his direction, and him being a generally good pick, things are as colorful as always for the mains of this champion. For this, we'll be keeping it short, since you've seen so much of this champion already. So, we're going to give you his easy to use core build. Get yourself a Divine Sunderer and Black Cleaver, and afterwards opt into situational tanky items to give you that extra survivability. Have you ever asked yourself after a bad game, what am I missing? Or sought help from impatient friends? Or browse desperately for answers that only bring up more questions? Your self-doubting days are over with Discovery, the first game-focused AI. Discovery is trained on the world's leading esports athletes to be your everyday personal coach. That's right, Discovery can help you improve your gameplay by giving you tips and strategies to take your game to the next level. Get started at ProGuides.com. Well, Jackson, now we have to move over to the jungle tier list, and here you should take a look first. With changes to the AD Assassin items such as Yumi's Ghost Blade and Dusk Blade, it's going to be interesting to see if the champions rather want to be upfront burst damage with added mobility from the Ghost Blade or have more execute damage on Dusk Blade. Will Rengar remain permabanned if you value your LP? Well, he's an assassin, so you can believe that's going to be the case. Anyway, let's talk about our first actual highlight for the jungle role. Graves is a decent champ into a few of the OP picks, namely Kha'Zix and Rengar, and the item changes benefit him quite a lot especially the change of BT granting him way more upfront damage, which makes it substantially easier for him to maneuver in skirmishes. Another thing that's rather intriguing about Graves is his flexibility in playstyle. He can be the most aggressive invading demon, or he can farm it out and wait for specific spikes to take fights. Either works, but depending on which route that you choose to have, you have to specifically know the enemy's clear speed and the relative strength compared to yours. Oh, and surely don't forget that the enemy team will always be first to move as if the entire universe is against you. At least it always feels that way, right? Currently, you can look into the Yumi's Collector Core build, but depending on the situation, you might look into Core Drinker, Cleaver, and a BT approach just to make yourself into a massive tank that guns down his opposition. Another power pick for this patch is Nocturne. He is better than before due to the enchanters being picked more often. Echoes of Hylia surely isn't busted, right? And the previous buffs to Stridebreaker. As a champion, Nocturne is infamous for being an entirely ult-centric character. So, you just play the game until his ultimate is available. Upon switching out the lights, he'll then quickly travel towards the ADC of choice with the speed of light, and, or I guess darkness, <laughs> and after crashing into them with the stride breaker slow and fair, well, they'll remove any type of counterplay, unless enemy can actually just stat check you at that moment. Sounds fun? Well, we think so too. So make sure you pick up stride breaker and cleaver as your core items, and then you'll be good to go. Now let's take a look at our mid lane tier list, so you're good to go in that lane as well. Saw what's busted? Alright. Then let's talk about a few picks here. Since we're also talking about solo queue, it's really important to consider the chaos and reliable setup that you can provide for your teammates on a consistent level. Picks such as Zillion on paper are absolutely broken from changes from 13.10 and weren't addressed at all in 13.11, but other power picks just do much more and a lot earlier. But first, let's talk about Zillion and what he provides for you. Zillion is more of a tier 1 protector, which means that he hugs his tower and wants to scale towards his power spikes. 
Once he gains access to his ultimate ability, he can enable his teammates to completely disregard specific laws of the game as they gain a second life. To add to that, he also has a crazy point and click slow with a stun setup that you cannot miss once the enemy is slowed. However, as we mentioned earlier, it's all about getting those cooldowns and level breakpoints to truly come online. Once that's done, he turns into a Sona tier champion that just completely takes over. To that in a proper fashion, you want Everfrost, and afterwards you can think about the situational items, even Imperial Mandate can work as it's super cheap. Otherwise, a Cosmic Drive for its movement speed and ability haste comes in clutch. Also, don't forget to start with a Sapphire Crystal. If you want a champion that provides setup earlier with a lot more damage than you want, take a look at Annie. This champion design is as easy as it gets and yet powerful as hell. You provide an immensely broken gank setup with your stun and can constantly zone off enemies by just having it available. Moving forward triggers an automatic response by your enemy. They'll have to respect you, and exactly that is something that you're going to make use of. Make sure to keep them on their toes and confuse them once your jungler is within range and you can just literally flash in their head and one tap them with your jungler's assistant. For your items, you obviously have Pen as your signature core build. On one hand, Luden's Echo, Sorcerer Boots, and Shadow Flame will send the enemy into the next game rather fast. On the other hand, if you're going against tankier champions, you can also build Leandri's Anguish instead of Luden's to abuse your Tibber's Burning Aura. Generally speaking though, you'll most of the time be fine with the Luden's pen build. Next comes the bot lane, and here we have adjustments for ADCs with some new builds. Trinity 4 Zeri is back my friends, and she's going hard. Speaking of going hard, there's another ADC that is absolutely bonkers with this item, and it's Lucian. We're going to be using the segment to focus on him. For your core, you basically have two options. You can opt into the Trinity Force build, or go for the current option of Stormraiser into Gale Force. The burst damage provided by this build is the highest, but the Trinity Force build grants you a lot more consistent DPS. With that in mind, it's time to think about your laning partner. Will you be playing with a support that will enhance your burst even more, or are you going to be allowed to safely DPS within extended trading windows? Important to note is that the Trinity Force build doesn't really feature crit, but rather goes for an on-hit approach with Blade and Cleaver. You're a lot tankier, but deal far less burst damage. To give you a third option, you can also look to Essence Reaver and Navori Quick Blades as your combo for maximum ability haste. With Navori's change, this might be something interesting as they give the item more damage and trade for it losing some ability haste. Luckily, you'll have plenty of that anyway. Next champion we want to highlight here is Jin. Again, here we're just going to be keeping it simple and easy. Go Stormraiser, Gale Force, and most likely Rapid Fire into LDR for your core. These items are just too good. If Jin isn't really your type of champion, you can also look into another type of champion with Poke Varus. Whereas Jin is a burst centric ADC that provides utility in the form of setup with its deadly flourish and curtain call, Varus is more about poking and locking people down. The items such as Yumu's Ghost Blade for the added lethality, Man Immune for the infinite mana, and bonus spell on hit damage you'll deal quite a lot of damage before the fight even starts. Also, I mean, as I mentioned earlier, BT is now providing a lot more AD. Adding this and Sorella to your build will grant you a bucket load of damage to take down enemies. Last but certainly not least, it's time for the supports. Take a good look at all the different tiers and placements before we go into our final highlight. With enchanters being around more often, it's time for Pike to dominate the map, as they're stuck in lane or just late to rotations. The power of this pick is mainly linked to your prowess when it comes to map domination. So here you have to put in some effort to make him work. He's also a great fan of Ghost Blade and even its nerf still doesn't affect him too much. It surely does make him a bit weaker, but it doesn't push him into buying another mythic as this one is really all he needs. So for your core, you really want those ability haste boots with Ghost Blade to take over as fast as you can. While Pike wants his boost as fast as possible, the other two champions are a little bit different. Buying early boots is an investment for an increased pressure on the map, but what if there's a way to brutally stat check people with just one item? In the distant past, a certain Janna one trick introduced an Ardent Rush. Ardent was absolutely broken, and it was sickening to see the differences between an ADC who had its buff and one that did not. Something similar is happening with Echoes of Helia. For your peel support Janna, you have the following adjustments to your build. For runes, you now want Glacial Augment and Font of Life to consistently trigger Echoes of Philia. And our other pick for you is Bard. Speaking of Bard, the build that you want for him is to opt into the typical Resolve Tree with Guardian to gain access to Font of Life. Both these builds mainly revolve around Echoes of Philia, which is the core of everything that is a broken enchanter right now. So ask yourself the following question. Can your champ proc Font of Life consistently on maybe multiple targets while dealing damage as well? If this is the case, then Echoes of Hylia is probably broken on said champion. 
The fact that Bard, the Chad, can even opt into tanky items afterwards makes it even more difficult to kill him if you add the mobility of his magical journey to the mix. And Kilijana was and will never be an easy thing. This champion is just straight up annoying to face as it literally denies a truckload of champions. Lovely. And that wraps up today's video. Thank you guys so much for sticking around to the end, and if you liked it, make sure you leave a like and sub to the channel, and come back for more Pro Guides content. And as usual, you guys know the drill. Stay safe, stay healthy, and have a wonderful day. Peace.